If your company terminates a material definitive agreement, unless the agreement is terminated by its own terms, you need to file a Form 8K with the SEC within four business days today on Zippy Point. I'm Brock Romanek, I'm a big fan of you. So triggers, an item 1.02 Form 8K is required if a material, non-ordinary course agreement is terminated otherwise and by the expiration of the agreement on its stated termination date or as a result of all parties completing their performance under the agreement and two, the termination is material to the company. So the contract has to be five things. One, the contract is material. Two, it's non-ordinary course. Three, it's not expired under the original contract. Four, it's not done because the parties have met their obligations under the contract. And five, the termination is material to the company. Materiality, that's a tough thing. Note that if the agreement was material when filed, but its termination is not material, no filing is required. Although no filing is expressly triggered by a repudiation or a breach of the material contract, consider whether such a repudiation or a breach is an effective termination. That might matter. What to disclose? Well, there are four things in item 1.02a. The first thing is the date of termination, the parties to the agreement, and any relationship between the parties other than due to the original contract. The second thing is the terms and conditions of the original contract. Three, it's the circumstances of the termination. And four, any early termination penalty. So what are the trigger dates? Under this Corpfin staff interpretation, receipt of a termination notice for a material agreement triggers this kind of 8K, even if you're still trying to negotiate a continuation of the contract. That staff interpretation also puts some gloss on instructions one and two to item 1.02, which provide that no 8K is required solely by reason of negotiations or discussions regarding terminations of the material agreement. Receipt of the termination notice is a trigger. So even if the termination is contingent and the company has a cure right, the 8K appears to be due, although you should reference its cure right in the 8K in the disclosure. And then in this Corpfin staff interpretation, if an agreement is automatically renewable pursuant to its terms, the sending of a non-renewal notice, not the expiration date of the agreement, is the trigger date. This is true even if the agreement does not terminate for a period of time. In this Corp Fin staff interpretation, the failure of either party to deliver a non-renewal notice of an expiring contract by a specified deadline does not trigger, because in that case, the agreement would have expired pursuant to its terms. So the exhibits for this type of AK vary. They get filed. Item 9.01 is the item you use when you file an exhibit with an AK. And then the type of exhibit might be a material agreement under 601 B10 of Regulation SK. It might be a press release that would be filed as an Exhibit 99. It might be nothing. You might not have an exhibit to this type of an 8K. Let's talk about some examples. Here's one of a company prepaying a loan. And then here's one that of a company paying off a credit agreement in connection with the merger. This one has a press release filed because there's a merger happening. And that's the most likely reason for it. Then this example is a terminated merger agreement. So the agreement to terminate the merger is filed uh, under number number 10 as a material contract. Here's a, an example with a, a termination of a supply and distribution agreement. And then here you have an 8K for a terminated lease, but a new lease is also announced. So in that, and that new lease is filed as an exhibit number 10. Mm -hmm.